Hi, comrades. I'll try and speak slowly, definitely. Um, first of all, thanks everyone for um, participating in this International Conference of Socialist Youth and thanks to organisers for inviting us to come along. Um, if I was to sum up the situation in Australia for young people, but also just more generally, I think we'd have to say it's one which is in transition. Uh, over the last uh, decade, if not more, there's been a number of issues that have mobilised young people in particular. Um, there was uh, several years of big protests around gay marriage rights, LGBTI rights. In 2014, there was a big campaign against the attempts by the Conservative government to deregulate uh, student fees, so increase fees for students. Um, and more recently, as there has been in many countries around the world, we've seen the climate strikes, and then particularly in Australia, the huge uh, demonstrations around the, the bushfires and the connection to climate change and the failure you know, of any government to do anything serious about that. However, despite these issues, one of the features of Australian politics um, over, you know, until recently has been the relative stability. Um, you know, we've still got all the horrors of neoliberalism and capitalism, but we'll not hit as hard by the 2008 global financial crisis as other countries were, um, primarily due to our economic relationship with China, who, you know, buy a lot of iron ore from Australia, and so that kind of um, uh, cushion things. Um, and because of that, we didn't see the same kind of sharp economic collapse, nor the kind of political polarization, which, you know, is more familiar to comrades from other countries. So on the right, we've seen in Australia growing confidence of the right wing of the Liberal Party, who got rid of a more moderate um, uh, Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, they turfed him out. And there's been some far right street protests, but nothing on the scale of, you know, Trump or Brexit, or the far right parties in Europe. On the left, We've had some, you know, protests and mobilizations around different issues, um, but we've not had a kind of, you know, Jeremy Corbyn or Bernie Sanders style phenomena. Um, and at the same time, we haven't seen, you know, large scale kind of street movements like you saw in the Indianados in Spain, um, the M15 movement. And the union movement is still very weak. Um, the lowest strike rate in over 100 years in Australia is happening at the moment and falling a union membership overall, um, despite, you know, all the attacks from the bosses. However, the impact of COVID-19 globally and in Australia is starting to change things. While the virus was you know, not as devastating here as it was in other countries, um, the economic impact has been and will continue to be immense for Australia. The IMF um, reports that Australia will be one of the hardest hit countries in Asia by the global recession, which is unfolding around us and already 600,000 people have lost their jobs. And because of the nature of the jobs, a lot of them in kind of retail and tourism, those kind of industries, they've disproportionately affected, you know, younger people, obviously. Um, the bosses are demanding further neoliberal reforms, uh, changes to laws protecting workers um, in order to stop, you know, their profits from falling uh, too low because of the shutdown that was, you know, happened because of COVID-19. And all of this affects youth quite dramatically, who are often in precarious jobs, um, you know, casual, unprotected employment, and you know, not members of unions, etc. So they're particularly vulnerable to exploitation, um, uh, but also you know, getting the sack from bosses who no longer need them. Uh, one uh, particular place, I guess, which brings together all these elements is the university sector in Australia. Universities have become a massive part of the Australian economy. Higher education is Australia's third highest export, ranking in over 300, uh, sorry, over $30 billion last year. And so the drop in international students has produced a massive crisis within the university sector, um, with lots of universities saying that they have lost hundreds of millions of dollars um, because of the COVID-19 crisis. And so they're proposing enormous cuts um, to university staff, to conditions, to courses, um, in order to try and claw back those profits. On top of that, the government just uh, two days ago announced they'll be increasing fees uh, for a series of different degrees in Australia, particularly arts, humanities, also law and economics, and they'll be increasing them by 113%. So a huge increase of tens of thousands of dollars um, for the people doing those degrees. Um, and on both these fronts, we're involved um, in you know, trying to push pretty serious campaigns. 
So in terms of staff cuts, a number of our members have been involved in a really serious rank and file revolt against the trade union national leadership who tried to sign a deal with the university bosses to accept massive uh, cuts. Um, and a number of campuses have rejected that deal, which is really a positive sign that shows that, you know, some people do want to fight back if people, um, you know, shown a lead by experienced revolutionary activists. And we're also in the process of organising a campaign about the increase of student fees and we'll be having national rallies uh, next Friday to relate to that. Uh, despite, you know, many years of relative stability in Australia, uh, Socialist Alternative, which is the group I'm a part of, has built a modest but strong base amongst young people. We have student clubs at over a dozen campuses and are by far the biggest socialist group amongst students. We have over 150 university student members that have been elected to student unions across the country and currently have two national office bearers in the National Union of Students. Um, and, you know, because of this base that we've managed to build up, we've played an important role in a number of campaigns. You know, some of which I mentioned before, the campaign against fee de deregulation 2014, uh, the campaign around climate change, which has been really enormous in Australia. Um, some of the biggest protests in Australia's history have happened over the last year and a half, two years, by high school and university students around that. Um, and we've set up a kind of radical environmental student wing of that, um, uni students of climate justice, to try and you know, push it in a more left-wing direction. Um, and, you know, we're going to be involved in this more recent campaign against the student fee increases which have been announced. And so there's, you know, a lot of uh, horrible things happening to young people in Australia. Um, they're really trying to push the burden of, you know, COVID-19 and the economic crisis onto workers in general and young people in particular, um, you know, so that the bosses don't have to pay for the crisis, which, you know, they've failed to respond to in any seriously humane fashion. Um, we've also spent uh, this time not just, you know, engaging all these campaigns, but working to try and convince people to be revolutionary Marxists and arguing against the various fads that exist, you know, on the student left, and I'm sure people internationally have come across them, you know, reformism, identity politics, anarchism, liberalism and whatnot, and trying to win people to a broader political perspective um, that places the working class at its heart as the agent of social change, and looks towards a revolution against all of capitalism, not just reforming it, you know, around the edges. We don't know exactly, um, you know, what the future is going to hold in Australia. Um, we're going through a pretty unprecedented situation for many, you know, decades. As I said, it would be relatively stable, some big protests around some issues, but not huge polarisation or radicalisation. Um, but there are signs that things are starting to shift um, because of what is happening here, but also what is happening internationally even when we don't know how quickly or deeply those changes will take place. And this, you know, changes will depend both on devel developments in Australia, but also developments overseas. If you look at the history of uh, radical movements in our country, they've often been tied to developments in other countries, and particularly in the United States. So in the, you know, 60s and 70s, there was obviously the enormous radicalization then, particularly around the question of Vietnam, but also racism and then capitalism more generally. And Australian students and workers were very much impacted by what was happening in the United States and other countries. Similar in the 90s and 2000s around the you know, anti-capitalist, anti-globalization movement, that had a big effect upon Australia as well, you know, starting in Seattle and spreading to you know, Europe and other places before also impacting Australia. And we've seen you know, little examples of that recently with the Black Lives Matter stuff that a number of other speakers have commented on. Um, the huge protests in America have definitely been followed by a lot of young people in Australia. And we've had some demonstrations here um, you know, relating to that issue, but also trying to connect it with the issue of Indigenous people who suffer you know, enormous amounts of racism from the police and society more generally. Um, so we feel that in this situation, having built, you know, a Marxist current amongst young people in relatively stable years, rather than, you know, just seeing back and not doing anything in, the, in that um, period or, you know, retreating like a lot of the far left have done, that we're in a strong position to relate to the new issues, struggles um, and layers of radical youth that we hope are going to be pushed in a more political direction by what is happening both in Australia and around the world. And we're, you know, happy to reach out and talk to other comrades all around the world about how they're going, about the issues in their countries and how we can work together um, to build the revolutionary movement that we so desperately need.
Thank you.